Hey, so church, we, we said we're starting a brand new series today called Hey Google, and then Pastor Dustin's going to tell us what it's all about here in a second. Um, but we're going to actually have our whole lead team up here on stage to kind of talk about, answer some questions that you've sent in bef- uh, already the past week that you're going to send in today. Yeah. So why don't you kind of talk us through what we're doing today? Yeah, I love that. Thanks, AB. And in just a second, I'm going to have y'all jump back up and just a second. We're going to be like Catholic Church today again in just a second. But I'll just tell you uh, really quick, um, this, this series has been on our heart because, man, I don't know about you guys, we all have questions about faith. Not just faith, but really questions about about the Bible, about, hey, how do I get through this season of my life? How do I walk through what I'm walking through? And honestly, over the last week or so, week and a half, y'all sent in some incredible questions. And today is going to be kind of off the cuff. Uh, those questions that you sent in, we're going to try and answer. And then we're going to ask you, as we're doing this, uh, would you text in some more questions? AB's got her handy-dandy laptop right here. And those things are going to come through live for her. And she's going to throw them to us. But I just thought uh, today, it's, it's, it's parents' weekend, obviously. Obviously, at Murray State, it's fall break, and I just think it's a good time to hear from everybody that's on our lead team. These are people that make up just our leadership team at our church that get to walk through uh, operations and ministries and programming and community, and uh, I'm just really grateful for them. So if y'all don't mind, uh, they serve a lot behind the scenes that a lot of you may not see, a lot of you may not even realize, but if you would, would you jump back up on your feet? Would you put your hands together as I welcome the Purpose Church lead team up here on stage? Come on, let's honor them. Here they come. Here they come. You're awesome. All right, you guys can have a seat. You can have a seat. You can have a seat. Love it. All right, so like Pastor just said, we've actually had questions that have been sent in over the past week and a half. And it, what we'd really love, if you have a question um, that, that you, it comes to your mind while we're sitting here, or if um, e- even if there's, there's something that someone says that's like, ooh, I want to ask about this, go ahead, text it to this number that's actually up on the screen behind everybody, 270-229-6488. It's totally anonymous. No one will see what your name is. I won't like call you out and say, oh, well, you know, so-and-so asked this question. Um, but we just want to have this an opportunity for you to, to ask us, and, and really more than anything, we're we're not going to give you our opinion. This, what we're giving you is not our opinion. We really, more than anything, want to point you back to God and his word. So you're, we're going to have tons of scripture. We've all got our Bibles up here, and we're going to be pointing you back to Jesus and what he says. And, and also, here's one other thing. There's a chance that there are some of you out there. In fact, there's a couple that come to mind who probably can answer some of these questions a little bit better than we could. So just hear us say that we don't think we have it all together. We don't think that, that we're the experts in it. We don't think that if we're answering this question, or if I ask somebody to answer this question, I don't think that they totally know how to do it. I think more than anything, it's that we go back to what this is right here into God's word. So um, before we get into the serious questions, we thought it'd be fun to do a little Q&A to kind of ask some more fun questions. So what, what I'd love to know, Randy, I know that you love Dairy Queen. So can you yeah. tell us what your go-to Dairy Queen order is? I, well, I feel very confident that there is a Dairy Queen in heaven. I, I've seen it in the good book. But my go-to, and you guys are going to find this hard to believe, is two chili cheese dogs and a small vanilla cone. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Simple, yeah. sweet, to the point. It's perfect. Kyle, why don't you give us what your go-to Dairy Queen order is? Okay. So, so before we go into that, so for all you parents here, the Dairy Queen in Murray is not like any other Dairy Queen anywhere around. I don't know what the... It's special. I don't know why it's special, but it's just incredible. So they only have hot dogs and ice cream, basically. So, and there's kind of a lingo that goes along with the Dairy Queen in Murray. So I like a foot with chili and then a short red and yellow. So that's a foot-long hot dog with chili and then a short, which is a regular size hot dog, with mustard and ketchup. So that's mine. Yeah. That's good. That's good. All right, Miss Allie, I know we've been to Dairy Queen a time or two. What is your go-to Dairy Queen order? <laughs> okay, so um, do I have any Reese's lovers out there? Uh, Amen. Yeah. Y'all are sanctified and all yeah. the things. So <laughs> I believe that Reese's are going to be in heaven. So shout out to the Reese's pumpkins and trees that are coming in season yes. right now. Absolutely. But I direct all that to what I order at Dairy Queen is a hot fudge sundae ad we call it the peanut butter sauce. The peanut butter sauce. <laughs> Some so about it. It's got a little bit of saltiness to it. And with that hot fudge, it is good. Don't get a small, get a large. Yeah. So, so good. That's what Today's serve is sponsored by Dairy Queen yes. of Murray, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's they're only open for like this 20 or more days, so you better hurry and go get there. You'll probably see each other there after service today at Dairy Queen. Say hi. Order, you know, the peanut butter sauce on sauce. top of what you get. Gotta say it <laughs> the like sauce. that. Gotta say it like that. All right, Miss Tika, we're going to change up our question a little bit. What is your favorite movie? Like when you, whenever it comes on and you see it, you're like, oh, I have to stop everything I'm doing and watch this. Okay, so I have three. Okay, I give can't. us all three of them. It just depends on my mood. So 
Like at Christmas, it's Christmas vacation all the way. Yeah, yeah. And whenever I really want to cry and get stuff out, it's still Magnolias. Oh, oh. And then to make me feel good, it's How to Train the Dragon. Yeah. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Pastor Dustin, what is your favorite go-to movie? I don't know that I can say this. Like, I'm an Ace Ventura fan, okay? So like, I don't know if anybody else out there feels that. But like, if I'm just, okay, I need a, just to pick me up, Ace Ventura, yeah. Pet Detective, right? Like, that's what I want to be watching. That or Remember the Titans. Like, I think America mm -hmm. needs to watch Remember the Titans every day. Yes. You know, like, let's just watch it, and we'll go there. Yeah, it's my favorite. It's good, good, good. All right, Katie, what is your favorite movie? It's really funny that this question got given to me, because I really am not a movie person. Um, so it took, like, Tika 3 came to her probably pretty quickly, and I was sitting here, like, Googling what is my favorite movie, asking Google what it is, because I don't really know. Remember the, the Titans I had written down, and then also The Greatest Showman. I've really, yeah, I really like that movie. That's a good one. I, so here's a fun fact about me. I, movie pass, do y'all remember when that was a thing like four years ago? Maybe, maybe not. Well, you could pay, you paid like a monthly subscription. You go see all the movies that you wanted to in the month. I saw The Greatest Showman nine times wow. in theater, nine times in theater. So I also loved it. Big fan. It was good. Katie, we're going to come back to you with this next question. Whenever you need encouragement or, or a lift up or just a redirect towards God, what is your go-to Bible verse? Okay, I got it right here. Um, and I also feel like when someone asks you your favorite verse, you know, you think of like, it's, it's hard to decide because throughout every season, you know, something different yeah, yeah. affects your life and applies to you. So I would have said something probably different, you know, three months ago. But for now, it is in Psalm 139, 8 to 10, and I'll just read it real quick. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. That's good. That's a great verse. And what I love, I'm, I'm just excited for just Bible verses is all we're going to be spitting today. So I'm really excited for that. Kyle, could you kind of give us what's your go-to verse for, for encouragement or whatever you need? I'm probably sure you're going to have like 17, but you know, <laughs> you're down to one. Um, I, th I think my favorite is probably uh, being that we're Purpose Church, uh, Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. And to me, that just, what it says is that basically that God, God is literally, he's sovereign, so he's in charge in every single thing that happens to us. Every little drop of haze that's in the atmosphere here, he has put it in its place. And all of that is working together for our good because he loves us. That's good. That's good. Hey, why don't you, you keep that mic because we're coming to you. We're going to, our first question, today's a Sunday. So one of the questions that came in is, why is church service on Sundays when it's supposed to be a day of Sabbath? Could you answer that for us, Pastor Kyle? So we, th this one's not off the cuff, just FYI. We knew these, a little bit of these beforehand. So, so in the, so when you go back, God brought the Israelites out of Egypt and he gave them some ceremonies and some rules and he gave them his law. And one of those things was the Sabbath. So there were obviously seven days in a week. So in Genesis, God created the, the heavens and the earth in six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. So he took that pattern and he gave that to the Hebrews, the, the nation of Israel that he brought out of Egypt. And he told them, six days you're supposed to work. And then on the seventh, you are supposed to Sabbath. So that was a Sabbath that was holy unto the Lord. I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe Sabbath means peace. Sab Sabbath, something like that, Shalom, or something like that, I don't know. It means something. Uh, you can Google that. Um, <laughs> but, but the seventh day, the seventh day was supposed to be a day of no work. Uh, you work six days, you do not work seven days, because God rested on the seventh day. The, the, the Hebrews were to rest on the seventh day. And actually the day before the Sabbath was called the day of preparation. So you literally made preparations, whether it's food or your work that you had to do, you made preparations to Sabbath. Because obviously there's things that you have to do every day, but you did those on the sixth day of the week to prepare for the seventh day of the week. So that was the Jewish people all the way through uh, when Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament. Now, when the church was started, they began meeting... The, the church services actually began meeting on the first day of the week. It was, I believe it was early in the morning uh, on the first day of the week. So that is why um, Sunday is technically considered our first day of the week. And that's why we have church on Sundays. Yep. 
that's so so if you, it's, it's almost more of a an issue of what day you consider the, the the sabbath and what day you consider the sixth and the seventh and then the first so technically if you go back to the jewish tradition the hebrew tradition the sabbath would actually be saturday sunday would be the first day of the week so friday would be the day of preparation so that's why um if you see like Jesus died on a Friday, the Sabbath was on a Saturday, and then he rose on the first day of the week. And so they, they, they began meeting because that's when Jesus obviously was discovered to be resurrected. It's early in the morning on the first day of the week. So that's the pattern. So that's honestly what we celebrate on Sunday mornings is the resurrection of Jesus. Because the Bible says if the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, then our faith is futile. Good that's good. good. All right. And what's, what's crazy is that actually remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy is, is a commandment. Right, it's in the Ten Commandments, and I know that kind of kind of going along with that. It's so easy to 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 be tempted to to break those commandments that God gave us. And this next question that came in is, how do I say no to temptation? So, Katie, you want to kind of talk us through how how we say no to temptation? Yes, um, I think first I would want to say, just we look at Jesus's life a lot, you know, to learn how we should live. And so there is in Luke four, there's scripture that says, you know, Jesus himself was tempted. And so when I knew that I was going to be addressing this question, I'm like, okay, I know how I probably in my flesh combat sin a lot, which is not usually the right route that I should go. But when I look at Jesus, you know, where is it in the Bible that he fought against it? And he did in Luke 4, and it was against Satan himself. And they went back and forth for um, a few verses, but it says that Jesus went back and forth with Satan and, and recited scripture to Satan, you know, to come combat against temptation. And so I was thinking, okay, so I my first practical response would be I am to know scripture so well that I can fight against temptation by saying scripture. Yep. And that really honestly convicted me because I'm like, do I know it well enough? You know, do I know scripture for every topic well enough that if I'm tempted in that moment, I'm able to say this, 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 you know? Um, but I actually wanted to read um, scripture if that's okay. Well, I guess so. I guess it's okay, okay to read the Bible. It's in Romans seven fourteen. It is a few verses, but they're also good. I was like, you know, should I take some of them out? I'm not going to because they're also good, but it goes right along with temptation. So I'll just read it real quick. But Romans seven fourteen says, we know that the law is spiritual for I am unspiritual. So does a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I don't do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I want not to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living inside of me. For I know that the good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this, keep, this I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. Almost done. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. I know that's rather lengthy, but it's just basically a battle. It's a spiritual battle of our mind. And, you know, to recognize that we are sinful and that evil is in us. We, we our flesh wants to do evil regardless of what, Jesus would have us do. And so to know that he, how he combated it makes me just feel like, okay, so I am to be prepared. And so you go into the temptation, into the battle prepared by knowing scripture. And so like, I guess if I break it down into two steps, it's one, be prepared. So you have to know the scripture and you, you really go into that moment knowing it. You don't wait until you're struggling until the temptation's right in front of your face. Cause Jesus already knew the scripture. You know, he's yeah. like, Satan, what do you think you're doing? Because I already know, you know, I'm not yeah. waiting until now I've been in um, the word already and I have it written on my heart. And then two, um, reading what I just read, I know it's a lot of do's and do nots and I want to do this and I don't do that, <laughs> but it's just proof of the battle that is inside of all of us. And it's That's crazy. Right. You look out and like we look at one another and we interact and you do not know what someone is battling inside of them, which is what is so unique about temptation. I feel like I can't speak on behalf of men, but for women, it's such a mental thing. And so we're constantly battling inside of our mind and how we combat that is scripture and the last, last thing, I'm sorry, is just to be aware, to be aware that it's happening in your spirit, because That's if right. you're not, you'll go further than you ever intended, Love and then that. you don't know what to do. So you just 
You think what, you know, what's going on in my life now that's tempting me and try to stop there rather than keep going. Yeah, Love that's that. great. Good Thank you for that. that. Randy, you got anything you want to add on to that? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I be open and transparent yeah. with you guys? Yeah. So there's a little gray hair on my head, and it's because I'm a church leader. And I have been a church leader for a long time, and that's why I have gray hair. Uh, and no one has been tempted and will be tempted more than a church leader, yeah. a worship team member, uh, an usher that's serving, a, a greeter that's out at the front door, a person parking cars. No one gets tempted more than a person serving the Lord or a person ministering to another person. When you do that, be prepared because you will be tempted. And so uh, I'd like to speak from experience this morning, if I could, and talk to you a little bit about trying to resist temptation on your own. Let, let me just say you will lose. Yeah. Surround yourself with a support system. And this is something that I've, I'm 59 now. Tomorrow's my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... The thing that I needed the most and the thing that I resisted as a young person was I thought I could do everything on my own. Yeah. I, thought, I thought I knew everything. I thought I didn't need any help. And that was the biggest mistake I made. So speaking from experience, get out your pencils and your papers because note takers are history makers. That's right. So look right here at Hebrews 2 verse 18. It talks about Jesus and for this is preemptive. So he says, For because he himself has suffered and was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So, so remember, you need help. Ask for help. Surround yourself with a crew. Shout out. Shout out to the crews. Surround yourself with a support system. Pick up that telephone and say, Hey, I am being tempted by this. I need help. There is no shame in that. And if you look at God's word, that's what he's commanded us to do. So, so as an elder and as a church leader, my advice to you about temptation is seek community. Seek help. Don't be alone. Don't try to fight alone. You, it just makes it worse. That's right. Thank you, Tika. That's good, Randy. Thank you. That's so good. Hey, if you want to join a crew, uh, head, on, head to our website, ourpurpose.church slash cruise. You can see the whole list there. They just launched three weeks ago now, I think. It is not too late to join a crew at all. And it is never too late to join a crew. And it doesn't have to be forever. It just got to be for right now because I guarantee you it will change your life if you jump, jump into a crew. So, so be sure to do that. Um, Miss Allie, if, if you can answer this question, we had a bunch of questions come in kind of along the same line of, you know, how, why does God allow bad things to happen to good people, just to happen in general? Um, could you kind of speak to what the Bible has to say about that for us? Well, I'm so glad that y'all have confidence in me answering this loaded question. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a question that we've all asked ourselves yeah. one time or another, if yeah. we can be honest. And I've known Jesus for over 20 years, but there's still days that, that all hell is breaking loose almost. And I'm like, God, where are you? Like, I've been faithful to you or like, I've been steadfast. Like, why are you allowing this to happen? You know, and y'all have heard, um, there's scriptures about it, but nothing doesn't, there's nothing that's not sifted through the hands of God. Yeah. Yeah. So everything that happens is through, it's gone through the Lord. Okay. So he's, he's putting his hand on it. And so I also wrote down that my second thought is, because the question A, B is, why do bad things happen to good people? Mm. Who am I to think that I'm good? Mm. You know? Um, if we were to think of the definition of a good person, like if there's a definition of a good person that they would never have any struggles or pain, mm. that would be the definition of perfection to me. And that is something I'm not, you know, none are righteous. No, not one. And so we fall in that category. You know, we are, are, are human and we have not received our eternal bodies yet. And so um, that's one thing that we, I think about is that we can't fully understand the plans and the purpose that God has because we are still living in these fleshly bodies. Yep. Yep. And so I love that uh, Jake spoke about Job this morning. That was such a 
just that was so cool that the Lord had already put that on my heart too, and he he was speaking about that. But Job lost everything. You know, I don't know if you know the story of Job, but what uh, I mean, a wretched like soul. He he had lost his family, his his farm, everything that he had built in his life. And what is so cool, and what encourages me, is that I can take heart in my pain because. God knew that he could trust Job. He said, you can tempt him. Don't kill him. Don't touch him. But you can take everything from him. And you know what? I know that he will still speak that I'm good and faithful. And so I take heart in that because whenever I face that pain or that struggle, I say, you know what? God knows that I'm going to speak of his faithfulness on the other side of this. And so I I just try to take heart in that. Um, And then also I just wrote down that, you know, we live in a fallen world. Satan, this is his territory, and he wants to do everything he can to lead us astray. And so our eyes have to be fixed on on heaven, the things that are unseen, the eternal things, um, because our reward will one day be be there. And so Romans 8, 28, Kyle said this, and it's kind of the backbone of Purpose Church. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And um, let's see, what else did I I put? Oh, I talked about, I I wrote all kinds of stuff, y'all. But I was talking about Paul. I love how Paul writes in prison. I mean, he's just like, Ain't nothing going to touch me. Like, uh, you can chain me up, and I'm going to minister to somebody, you know? So I just love how Paul, he is in the midst of prison and the worst of the worst, and he is saying, um, you know, I, I'm going to rely on the Lord, and he's faithful to deliver. And so one more thing. I'm almost done. Um, <laughs> I wrote this, and I, I, I was writing this down last night, and I just felt the spirit of God. I felt those holy ghost bumps, and Um, I just wanted to tell somebody that maybe you're not seeing um, God's faithfulness in your life. Like you can't even see a glimpse of it. You're like, Allie, I am so far in this pit that there's scales on my eyes and I can't even see it. But I want to remind you that if you will put a stake in the ground and say, God, I don't understand I don't get it, and I don't know how you're going to work it out, but I know that you will be faithful. I believe that when you go to eternity, that there's going to be generations, your grandchildren, your your cousins, there's going to be family and friends that walk through the gates of heaven because you put a stake in the ground and you said, God, I trust you, and you will be faithful, and I believe that. And so I just wanted to read Revelation 21, 1 through 5. It says, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming up, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among his people. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be them will be with them and their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Lord, I am just so ready for that. He he who was seated on his throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. And that's something I want you to write down today if you're taking notes is that I can believe that my God is trustworthy and true. And I'm just like, speak that, speak that everywhere I turn. You are trustworthy and true. So, Man, you can preach. Come so on, somebody. Good. I'm sorry. I just got the microphone now, so I got to say that. So good. Thank so, you. so good. Ms. Tika, we're going to ask you this next question right here. Uh, how, do, um, how, how do I... Let me scroll back to it. One second. How do I help out my significant other, or, or, or how do I deal with a significant other who, who doesn't want help? Okay. Well, Randy's my significant other. In case Randy needs know. lots of help, everybody. Come on, somebody. All right. Pray for me. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, in a, in a marriage, in a relationship, it's not always going to, they're not always going to reach out for help. And they could be dealing with something that's real deep. And so as the person who is their supporter, you have to go to God in prayer. Because the only person that can change that is God. Like, I can't change what he's feeling. I can't fix it. But I can go to God, and I can beg for him. Mm. 
and I can, I can pray specifically. Um, and sometimes even in a relationship, it's, it's scary to share, okay? But you know that person well enough to, that you know they're dealing with something that's deeper than anything that you've heard. And so I, I just wrote down some things like, you know, prayer is our first go-to, you know. And so you got you to gotta ask God, what is it that I need to be praying for? What is it that he needs or she needs? God, help me to know what those are. And then you just get down on your knees and you start praying those words. And you just keep asking God to take over because, again, we can't fix it. We can't fix it for them. And the only way for them to heal is to get it to the surface. And, and once they get it to the surface, maybe they're going to share it with you. And then you'll be able to celebrate with them. Because it's, not, it's ugly. It's not going to feel good. Like you want to push it back down. Like I get stuff that comes up to my throat, but it won't come out. I want to push it down. I'm a good swallower. Yeah. Like I can get it back Amen. down. I'm not, I'm not going to do this. But at the same time, I know I'm not going to heal. Yeah. I'm not going to heal unless I let it out. Absolutely. And so you got to have those people to trust. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, God put you together for a reason, mm -hmm. and he put those people around you for a reason. And so um, whenever we were doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting, I, I had been through a season of empty nest, and uh, it's really hard. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I didn't trust people. I went, I drawed inward because I didn't want people to know exactly how I was feeling. And so during that 21 days, I, I asked Dustin and Allie, hey, just pray for me to trust again. Like, I want to be able to trust people. I want to be able to share with them really what's bothering me. And because, you know, we want to look like we got it all together. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, Again, I just, I, just, I, I just kept seeking God. I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel it. The whole time I'm like, okay, we're on day 18, and I still don't feel it, God, but I'm coming. I'm coming to you. I'm turning on that video. I'm going to pray at the end, and I'm just going to believe it. And just the word trust just popped up everywhere, everywhere I looked, out of other people's mouths. And I was like, the truth is how I trust. And so I have to speak the truth. I have to tell people my true self to be able to get there. And so, um, again, just with your, with your relationships, you have to, you can't fix it. You got to help them. And the only way to do it is prayer. You know, be specific about uh, is, it the, is it obedience to God? Is it, is it a situation they're in? Uh, do they need spiritual strength? Is it a decision they're getting ready to face? They don't even know it's coming. You know, just be specific. And, um, and even the encounters that they have daily, just pray for them daily that they can uh, wear the armor. Randy says that all the time. Put on your armor and just be ready because it's going to come at you. Yeah. And um, so the verse that went along with that is Romans 12.10. So let me get to it here. Uh, Romans 12.10. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, honor is our posture here. Yeah. So we have to lead that. We have to believe that. We have to honor the person that we're in a relationship with. Yeah. Right. And we have to be there for them in prayer. That's great. great. That's great, great Mystique. Thank you so much. That's good. And I know while you were saying, talking about trusting and having a hard time trusting on day 18, what came to my mind is as the Israelites were walking around the wall of Jericho. Yeah. And just as we've been through this whole building process, that's what's constantly come to my mind is, is just waiting on God because it was the seventh day, the seventh time that they yeah. marched around. Imagine how crazy they looked and how crazy they felt as it was the sixth time and the fifth time and the fourth time. And they thought, God, I know you've called us to do this, but here I am looking like a total fool walking around this wall and it ain't coming down yet. Yeah. But it was through that process that they're building our faith and our trust in God. So it's not necessarily about the other person half the time. Right. A lot of time it's about God doing something in us. Yes. So that's good. So good. Thank you, Ms. So Tika. Good. Now, this is actually one that came in during first service. And, and here's how it came in. There's, this is like a common ideology that's held by people. It's okay if I sin, I'll be forgiven on Sunday. Tell us why that's Ooh. incorrect. Wow. Say that again. <laughs> it's okay if I sin, I'll be forgiven on Sunday. Okay. So, actually, Paul, so in the book of Romans, so that was Romans 8, two chapters before that, Romans 6. 
uh, Paul actually answers that question in the book of Romans. And, and basically the, the, the line of thinking goes, well, if Jesus died for our sins, and if we can ask for forgiveness, then why not just sin continually? Because we will be for, forgiven continually. So what is, what is the point? Why, why do not sin? And Paul answers it like this. This is Romans 6, uh, starting in verse 1. He says, what shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Wow. Going on, this is verse 11. For the death he died to sin, verse 10, for the death he died to sin, he died once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also, con here's, the, here's the answer to that question. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, anytime you see therefore in scripture, it means what I'm about to say is all, it hinges on what I just said. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal, mortal body to make you obey its passions. So what Paul's saying is that when we become believers, when God saves us by grace through faith, we become a brand new creation. And that old person, just like when we baptize people out in the parking lot, when we see people go under, that's a representation of the old man has died. The old man was alive to sin. When that new person comes up, they are, that is, that is uh, alive to God, dead to sin. So if we've died to sin, there will be a new, if we have a regenerated heart and a new created heart, there will be a desire to pursue God and to battle sin. And notice I said it's a battle. That doesn't mean that we don't ever sin because trust me, we sin all the time. But it's a battle to sin and a battle to, to continue to kill what's already dead, which is really makes it's really deep but that's we died to sin that's the answer to it yeah. yeah that's that's great and what i love here about purpose church is that we believe that it, it you can you can belong before you believe yeah. Yeah. and so it doesn't matter what you were it matters what you were doing last night but we, we more importantly than that want you to feel to, to we want to push you towards god before you know god yeah. Yeah. and so uh, that's that's what i love about here us here at Purpose Church and, and everything that we do. And, and Allie, let me, we're going to come to you this next question that came in. Kind of kind of relates a little bit. How, how can I make it through a difficult season? How do we make it through difficult seasons in life? So for me, I feel like it's just to, the seasons are coming. They're going to come and go. It's just like we've said, the difficult times are going to happen. We have to acknowledge that. Yep. But for me, it's to have some specific things in place before that season comes. And so you've got to do some practical things. And I'm excited because I'm going to tell you some practical things today that I do when I know that, hey, the enemy, he's coming and he's trying to steal and he's trying to kill and he's trying to destroy. Yep. So I have to be ready. And so a few practical things that I do, and Katie hit on this earlier, and I love it. And this is so solid is that you have got to know God's word. You have got to have the scripture memorized. And I know that sounds churchy, like, okay, we know we need to know the Bible. Oh, there goes my notes. You know that you need to know the Bible, but we have got to, in those situations, like the other day, I was at the doctor's office with the girls, and that morning, everything had just, it was, the world was crashing down around me, okay? And I just kept saying to myself in my mind, because you know our minds wander and, and just, it can be so destructive. I just kept saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If someone would have came up to me and asked me a question, I probably would have said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> you know, just because it was like, I just kept replaying and replaying and replaying. And so until you can get your mind to change in its way of thinking, you've got to keep implementing those scriptures, you know, just to renew your mind, renewing our mind. And then I, I don't want to take too much time, but I'll give you, let's say two more things. Okay. So one thing that I, I'm in our house a lot, right? Because I have our four kids and it's a circus on our best day. You can laugh at that. It's okay. We don't all have it together, okay? So it's crazy in our house. And so in our home, I know that we're going to spend in the day there. I wake up in the morning and I turn worship music on. And it may be everybody's woke up on the wrong side of the bed, but I'm going to blast that worship music because I'm, going, I'm determined that our house is going to be a house of worship. And so sometimes when you don't believe it, somebody else has got to say it for you. And so whenever you play music in your house, you turn on a podcast, you listen to 
to a sermon, you hear someone's testimony, that is them reminding you and speaking into your life to say, hey, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. When you can't see it, it's still there. And then uh, the third thing I was trying to, um, wait, I put it in my phone. Hang on. It's good to have this stuff written down. Yes, y'all got to have it written down to be practical. Oh, um, oh, I like this one. Come on. (laughs) You got to find, hunt down, plan, prepare, find every way possible to find time to laugh. Come on, love that. (laughs) I love to laugh. (laughs) <laughs> I know that was so silly, but I really do. I think that laughter, we say it is soul, is medicine for our souls. Yep. And so you have got to implement times in your life that you can laugh. Yep. God okay. is a God of joy, and he wants you to enjoy your life, okay? So find times when you laugh, laugh really, really, really hard. Okay? That's a few practical things for a hard season. That's good. That's real good. Pastor Justin, this is also a question that came in during first service, and I'm going to give this one to you. How do I get a dear friend to go to church when a previous church hurt him deeply? Wow. That's a good question. I think that's a great question. I, I think, um, honestly, if we can be honest, let's be honest. It's, it's church, right? We can be honest together. How many of us have been hurt by somebody else in our life? Just go ahead and raise your hand. Okay, I think all of us can agree that we've all walked through seasons where we've been hurt. Um, and I think for me, the thing that I think about when I think about, uh, that, is a, that, is such a, that is such a good question because of the fact that that is, I think that's what a lot of us deal with. You know, our friends, no, I'm not going to there, man. I know that there's hypocrites there. I know that, you know, whatever it might be. And uh, I, think, I think the thing that uh, more so than just getting them to church uh, to me, I believe would be uh, you uh, continuing. And I just saw something written in Allie's phone, uh, which is great, and it's a good reminder. It's extend grace. It's extend grace. And so my thing is be a life, be a person that when that person, they want to be around you because you are so life-giving. And that life-givingness comes not from yourself. Obviously, it comes through God's word, through prayer, through, uh, you know, fasting, doing the, dis- the disciplines of your Christian walk. But for me, it's, I-, I want people when they walk away from being in my presence, I want them to be like, man, I really enjoy being there, really enjoy being a part of that. And so when we create those kind of atmospheres around us, what happens, I feel like, is that, okay, when we extend that invitation to say, hey, man, listen, I go to church at Purpose Church, won't you come? Like, if we are a person of faith, if we're a person that's, maybe they see us walk through a season that is really difficult, and yet we still have faith in the middle of it. We still persevere in the middle of it. I think... I. I just think all of us, as we talked about even last week with the coaches that were here uh, from Murray State, uh, my thing is we all have a platform, and somebody's watching at all times. And so for me, I think just the way to answer that the best would be, hey, live what you say, right? Let's live it out. Let's, let's, let's show where we mess up. Let's talk about it. Let's say, hey, you know what? I know this season is hard, but, man, I love Jesus like more today than I ever did yesterday. And so I think that's a good way. They got to see it from you. Like, don't just invite them if you're out there with them on Saturday night. You know what I'm saying? For the most part. I mean, there's no difference. If you, you can't make a difference if you're not living different. So I would say just continue to live differently and then invite them to church. Yeah, that's And good. bomb lunch at Dairy Queen after service. Clearly, until October 31st. Legit, then, yeah. No more. Um, Katie, kind of with that, when we do, when we're struggling with something like that, a lot of times it has to do with insecurity and pride in our own things, overcoming that inside of ourselves. So how do people who struggle with pride, because we all struggle with pride, right? How do, how do we who struggle with pride give that pride over to God? Good question. Um, I want to start off with in Psalm 10, 4, it says, In his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. So I was thinking about, you know, what even is the teacher in me? He's like, okay, what even is pride? You know, I feel like maybe we all think different things about it. But I, until I studied it and really even to answer this question, became more familiar with it. I have always thought that pride just meant thinking that I'm not anything, that I'm just not worthy. You know, I'm not able to talk about where I'm gifted. I'm not able to say thank you to somebody when they compliment me because that's being prideful, you know? And so I thought that it was very unique that I was going to answer this question because that is me. And I, so many of you have told me compliments this morning and I've been like, you know, because I don't want to say thank you because I feel like that's prideful. And so when I read read that verse and I was thinking, okay, so what is it saying? It says, in all his thoughts, there is no room for God. So pride is just giving the wrong credit to where it's not due. You know, like I, 
I can be proud of what God has done in my life and I can be thankful for my gifts and talents, but my thoughts are on him because of those things. It's not leading to more me, 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 you know, let people see me. It's no, thank you God so much for giving me this platform, for giving me these strengths and these talents, but I'm gonna give them back to you. And then I, I do believe that you'll bless me more. I had something else. Um, oh, the last thing would be that pride and lack of confidence are not um, opposites. So like lack of confidence, that's not what God has called you to, because how can you walk through life and know your purpose and, and live out his plan for you if you don't have um, ultimately pride because of him? That's where it should come from. It's the source. It's not, it's not of ourselves. That's so good. I want to jump in real quick and just throw, I think the way that we combat pride uh, to me is the way that, uh, that Jesus would do. Um, ultimately in the way, the opposite of, of prideful, prideful obviously is, I feel like it's thinking more of myself a lot like what Katie said, a lot like putting the glory on myself. You know how you combat that? You serve, yeah. you know, the, honestly, that's the way that Jesus would do it. Jesus told us the first will be last, so you know, and, and so the last will be first and, and the, the greatest among you will be the servant of these. And so for me, the way that we combat pride, the way that we come against pride, uh, to me is to, is to bend a knee, is to grab a towel. It's to, it's to begin to serve. And that is, if you have a posture, if you, if you have a posture of being a servant, there is no pride in that. Yeah. And uh, I just think that that's a way that we can really combat that. Yeah, no, that's, that's really, really good. Uh, Randy and Tika, this next question is coming to you to kind of tag team a little bit. How do we deal with difficult people? Oh, oh. <laughs> Everybody look at your people around you and say, uh-oh, people. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody ever saw that meme on Instagram? Uh oh, people. So as a, as a lead team, we're reading a book together right now called, called Help Me, I Work With People. And uh, so, so as a lead team, uh, we, we combat this on a daily basis, mainly these people right here on the stage. Uh, so, so we have to lean in right now to more of what we talked about with pride in that our, our battle against that is to look at ourselves, yeah. Yeah. okay? So, so we start out by saying, saying, hey, how can I be a better person? Not how bad that person is. Right. And so uh, Jesus talks about it now, and Paul talks about it here in, in Romans. They talk about, for the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See also here, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith that God has given you. I think those are wise words that, that each of us can use. Tika, what do you think? Well, for me, I, I'm an Enneagram 9. Is there any peacemakers out there? Okay. <laughs> we're, I think we're very few around. But I immediately, when I see I've got to deal with someone difficult, I immediately, like, I don't like confrontation. I just want to fix it. I want them to be happy. But... At the same time, if you're going to uh, be able to help them, then you got to listen to them. So I try to automatically call on the Spirit and say, hey, God, I need your help. Uh, I don't know how to respond to this because I immediately get nervous when someone is upset. Or if they're being quiet and they're not talking at all because they're mad. So I just try to figure out what is it that I need to ask to get them to get it out. Yeah. And to help them resolve that. And most of the time, you can come up with something that's happened to you and how you reacted to it. And so, like, um, I always think of the Sermon on the Mount whenever Jesus says, you know, you have to show love and humility. So you got to go into a conversation, like Randy said. You got to put yourself aside. You got to think about, like, I, it's not about me. Um, so what is it? How can I help this person? Yeah, and you got to approach it with love and humility yeah, because good. like, I like to know people's stories. So, you know, I'm a storyteller growing up. I don't know if anybody knows that about me because I sometimes, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but sometimes I go, I use too many details, but it's part of the story. And yeah. I, and I don't, and then I lose Randy as I'm telling it because he's like, Oh, is she ever going to get to the point? <laughs> but that's what uh, drives me is I want to know your story. And I want to know, like, why you're upset, 
is it something that happened yesterday or is it something that happened 20 years ago? Yep, I mean, that's, good. that's how you got to approach that and you got to be there for that person and listen. You know, a lot of times we do too much talking. Sometimes they just want you to listen. And yeah, so the verse that goes with that is just your common everyday verse that people talk about is Luke 631. Do to others as you would have them do to you. That's so good. if you want, if you want that, like Randy says too, a lot to me is you got to be that. Yeah. So you got to be that person that they can approach yeah. and that they can trust and that they can tell the truth to, and you be able to help guide them. I love that. love that. So everybody write this verse down. This is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And these are the yeah. fruits of the spirit. It's a good one. Right? So when you're dealing with a difficult person, everybody repeat after me. Love. Joy, joy, peace, peace patience, patience, kindness, kindness goodness, goodness, faith, faith gentleness, gentleness, and everybody shout this out, self-control. That's good. That's good. Pastor Justin, this next question is going to come, come to you. What do I do if I feel like I'm not enough? Wow. Um, it's a great question. Um, do you mind if I give this to my wife? Oh. <laughs> do you sure. still love me? Can you still say those honoring words right now that I'm throwing this to you? Yes, because I have been thinking, well, I just thought I knew what I would say to that question if it got asked. And my answer would be welcome to the party yep. because nobody feels like they're enough. Right. And secondly, Jesus went and gathered up people that weren't enough. And I just take so much hope and refuge in knowing that Jesus chose the disciples that weren't enough. And so I just say, welcome to the party. Let's do this. Because whenever you put what you have in the hands of God, he makes it enough. And so maybe you're sitting here today and you're like, I, I've walked in this place and I don't have the gifts or the talents or the looks or whatever it is. But remember, it's not about... Those things, it's not about who you are, but about whose you are. That's right. Oh, that's and good. so if you stay grounded in that and <laughs> just, it's, it's something that I've walked through personally, you know, just, uh, just really insecurity and uh, confidence issues. Ah, there goes my notes again. All right. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> you can laugh. It's okay. Like, geez, tough crowd, tough crowd. <laughs> I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> I got the last. <laughs> but anyway, is that from Ace Ventura? No, it's not. I just, oh, did it, I just did it in an Ace Ventura voice. That was all it was. I'm sorry. The Grinch. Yeah, tough crowd, tough crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I was talented with the, with the voices, did you? Okay. All right, back to church. So I'm just kidding, y'all. But anyways, what I'm saying is just renewing your mind and your spirit and your soul and just recognizing that Allie alone is not enough. Yeah. But when I am paired with Christ and, and his sacrifice and what he's done for me, the blood that he shed, it definitely is enough. Yeah. Okay. I love so, that. So yeah, good. that's that's real good. And, uh, you know, I, I saw the questions beforehand, and I, I that question came across, and I was like, man, that's that's such a good one. And what's been interesting about all these questions is that they all kind of have the same, same theme and the, and the same core to them is that, so many times we forget who we are and who God is yeah. and, and who, who be God being, who God is and what that makes us because, because we are chosen. And, and really at the end of the day, right, we're, we're not enough. You know, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we are not enough. There is nothing that I can do that would make me enough. But when, when God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us, he was enough. And he loved us so much that he paid it all and gave it all for us. And, and because of that, it doesn't matter what we think. And it doesn't think about ourselves. It doesn't matter what other people think about us. But at the end of the day, it matters what God says. And, yep. and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blitz through a couple of verses here real quick of just who God says we are straight from the Bible. Galatians 3.26, for you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So we are a child of God. Galatians 4.7 says that we are not a slave, but we are an heir because we are children. Yep. Ephesians 2.4 and 5 says that we are alive 
alive in Christ. Genesis 127, that we are made in the image of God, the perfect yeah. almighty God. We are made in the image of him. John 15, 15, we are a friend of God. Psalm 139, 13 through 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Philippians 4.19 says, I, I have all, but God, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. So all our needs are supplied and taken care of. He, Hebrews 10.10, we are set apart. Ephesians 1.7, we are set free. Yeah. So whatever bondage and, and, and sin's holding you, we talked about first service, how do we overcome temptation? Go back and listen to that because it's real good. But at the end of the day, we are set free because, yeah. because of the price God paid. Yeah. Matthew 5, 13 through 16 says that we are salt and light. Ephesians 2, 10, we are his workmanship. He created us perfectly. 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, but you are not like that for you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are chosen. God chose you. He made the choice for you. Romans 8, 37 says that we are more than a conqueror. And right after that, Romans 8, 30 and 39, I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Yeah, come Lord. on. Can we give Jesus a big ovation for that right now? Come on. We do that every week. Let's thank God for scripture. It's so good. There's a whole bunch of red on this page right here. It's real good. Well, well, we have time for one last question. And like, like I said earlier, we'd love if, if there, we answered a whole different set of questions for service. So when we put out the podcast and the, and the live stream later tonight, go check it out and listen. Because um, I, I guarantee you, we, we just read even more scripture then. Um, but Pastor Justin, one last question. What is my purpose? What is our purpose? What's, what's the purpose of all this? It's good. That's good. And if I could have Kyle, my friend, play those. Don't y'all love Kyle? Oh, we, can we honor Kyle? Another one of our pastors on our staff. I'll just tell you, he's incredible, incredible friend, incredible man, but I, I am really good on the spirit keys in the back. So uh, really thankful for him. Um, are you thankful for our lead team? Come on, let's honor them really quick. <clears throat> I, I, want to, uh, I want to just, that's a great question because, man, what happens is I think for a lot of us, we, that's the most, just so you know, that's the most Google question ever ever is what is my purpose it's the literally the most google question of all time and so for me i think we're going to google and we should be going back to god and i don't know about you but there's so many times whenever i have tried to figure out what like what my purpose was you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go search for it everywhere else let's be honest right and if we can be just real together for just a second there's been many times that i chased the wrong path right i was running real hard in the wrong direction and um, I think all of us can, can relate to that somewhat, but we were chasing that. That, that hole that's on the inside, that thing on, in the middle of us that and we say something has got to feel that, something has got to be in the something has got to just to be there. And we try and chase anything. We chase everything. And honestly, if we can be honest again, it's church, we can be honest together. Good things and bad things we've chased, right? If anybody ever out there ever chased anything other than God, good and bad, I think we all can say us. All of us have. And I think, again, in my own life, there have been times where I chased the wrong things, um, like like uh, even even maybe morally or whatever, but also even trying sometimes to do the good things really, really well to earn that purpose, to earn that. Uh, and again, Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says it's for by grace through faith that we're saved. Not of our works, not anything we've done. It's a gift of God. And I, and I think about that so many times. I ran after all kinds of stuff. And uh, just to try and fill that purpose, fill that void on the inside of me. And I think a lot of us can understand that. We can walk through that season. You may be in that season right now where you have searched and you've searched and you've searched. You've tried religion. You've tried relationship. You've tried uh, supplements, alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever it might be. And all of that still fills you empty. And uh, I, I think so, so many times we try and think that those things are going to satisfy us. But at the end of the day, we sober up or we, we come down and we're still asking that same question. Hey, what's my purpose? What am I here for? And that didn't satisfy us. So you know what we do? Let's just be honest. We go a step further. Okay. That didn't satisfy. Maybe if I go a little harder, maybe if I go a little further, that that would be the thing that would satisfy me. And I think about that and I think about um, just how I've been there. And I think about that and I think about just I 
think about that and I think about even in the middle of all of that that Jesus still loved me and I never understood what my purpose was going to be until I until I fully gave my life to him and uh there have been so many seasons where I have doubted that purpose, but I've never not known that I didn't have a purpose. And I'll, I'll just tell you that when you give your life to Jesus, like the thing that you've got to understand is that there may be seasons that you still doubt your purpose. Like, they still doubt it. Like, are you really calling me to this? Like, you sure? Anybody ever been there before, right? You sure? Um, not that you won't doubt your purpose, but the fact is that you have a purpose. And I just want to, I want to tell you, if you've got a breath in your lungs and you have, you have a heart in your chest that's beating, you have purpose that God has a plan for you. He wants to use you. He wants to save you. He wants to set you free. He doesn't want you walking in what Kyle, you know, hey, what Kyle was even sharing about how, you know, he wants to, you, he wants you to die to that old way of life. He wants to walk in new. And, and I just believe in my whole heart that, that when you focus on the right thing, when you put your focus in on the right thing, first of all, relationship with Jesus, that is, that's the sole purpose of why we're here on this earth. And then once we find Jesus, once, once he calls us, draws us to him, we have a relationship with him, our sole purpose, it looks different for everybody, but it's to go out and make a difference for Jesus. So I, I, I think a lot of us, we try to find that everywhere else, but it can only be found. No one but you, as we sing, as we're going to sing, as we're going to declare this entire, this entire sermon series that we're going to walk through together, hey, we might be able to go Google and answer, hey, how do I find my purpose? But there's no one but you. It's no one but you. It's nothing, nobody else that it's about. Nobody else that can fulfill that purpose like Jesus can. And so I think that's the heart, obviously, of our lead team as we sit up here before you guys. And, and again, man, I just want to honor them. Can you put your hands together one more time and honor them for being up here today? As we stand up here, or as we sit up here, I just want you to know that's the person that we're building this church upon, Jesus. Not us, not what we want to do, not, not, it's, it's upon that name. No one else but Jesus. And so if you want to build your life upon anything else, if you want to have purpose in your life, it starts with the relationship with Jesus. So here's what I'm going to ask everybody to do. Would you mind staying to your feet? And would you mind bowing your heads and closing your eyes? I'm going to ask you now. You're in this room, and, and again, it's a different format, but you know what? I love the Holy Spirit, what He does, how He can speak to you individually, how He can take words that we may have said and Scripture that we may have read, and you may have never heard them, or you've heard them your whole life, and how the Holy Spirit can still speak to you. And I believe that He's doing that in this room and online even today. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You're in this place, and uh, again, at the end of the day, you can search for purpose everywhere. You can try and go out there. And that's what our church is going to be about. It's going to be about making sure that we connect people to Jesus and then help them live on purpose. Because you are, when you're connected to Jesus, that's when you really get purpose in your life. And so I, I just want to ask you, the Bible tells us, this is, this is the Bible. And I just imagine it in my head. Uh, Romans 3.23 says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Listen, the guy with the microphone in his hand, we've all messed up. We've all walked through seasons. What well, We were born into this thing called sin. And guess what? We have, a, we have a Savior that even in the middle of all of that, that he loved us enough to come. And, and, and I just imagine that Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short. No matter what we try and fill our life with, no matter what we try and aim at, man, we're always falling short. And the only thing that will satisfy that need on the inside of us is the name of Jesus, is a relationship with Jesus. And so you're in this room and you say, you know what, I, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. But today you want to have a relationship with Jesus? I, I, the Bible just says, declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. I just want to tell you, like, you don't have to say these words word for word like I do, but I want you to mean it in your heart. And if you need a relationship with Jesus, it's as easy as asking him to come and save you and forgiving you. Something like this. Just say, dear Jesus, would you come in my life? Would you save me? Would you forgive me of my sins? I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you were put in the ground, in the grave, and I believe that you rose again and that Yahweh will worship you all the days of my life. Thank you for forgiving me. I, I put my trust in you. I put my life in your hands. You are the Lord of my life. And from this day forward, help me live for you, Jesus. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're watching online or listening on podcasts, or maybe you're in this room and you just prayed something like that. 
that you just said, hey, I wanted a relationship with Jesus. I want a relationship with Christ, and that's you. Here's what I want to do. First of all, celebration is our response. Just so you know, Church for Purpose Church is always going to be loud. It's always going to be more of a party than a funeral because we serve a risen Savior who's not dead. He is alive, and just like Jesus got out of the grave, I believe there was somebody in this room watching online, listening on a podcast that literally just crossed over from death to life by saying yes to a life-giving relationship with Jesus. And what we want to do, what we want to just be a, a good steward of that decision that help you figure out what's next. Okay, now what do I do? Okay, baptism is your next step. And we want to put a Bible in your hands. It's got some great places for you to start reading and getting to know Jesus, this Jesus that you just said yes to. And we're going to put you in there and say, hey, you know what? John, John will be a great place to start reading. Just start reading about the life of Jesus. And we want to celebrate with you. And we got a team that would love to do that. So on my right wall, your left wall is our, our prayer team. And they would love it. I'm going to count to three in just a second because our team is going to get prepared. They're going to go outside, make sure everything is ready to go for you on the way out. And, uh, you know, in just a second. So you're not even going to be the only one moving, but I'm going to count to three. And I'm going to ask you to move. And those, that team is on my right wall, your left wall. If you don't mind, if you just said yes to a relationship with Jesus, would you go over there? We'd love to celebrate with you, love to party with you. And then also I'll tell you um, that maybe, maybe you're in this room and something that was set up here today, just the Holy Spirit struck you on the inside and said, you know what? I need to share that with somebody. I need to get this off my chest. I need to I need to pray. I need somebody to pray for me even. That's what our prayer team's there for. They're over on that right wall. And just a second, I'm again, I'm going to count to three. If you don't mind, would you just move? Our team's going to move. I'm going to ask you to do that on three. One, two, three. Would you move? If you need, if you said yes to Jesus, would you go see them? If you need prayer, would you would you just make your way that way? We'd be honored to pray with you, honored to pray for you, carry that load, that burden with you. It'd be great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. 